morning or afternoon, whatever time of day it is. Um, this is Linda here from Jewelry Maker. Welcome back to my um, series of a uh, slippy table videos is what I've decided to call myself due to the fact that my highly polished table, um, <clears throat> with all the hard work I've put into it in the past, is now working against me because my... Um, Max, as you can see, slips all over the place, so apologies for that. Anyway, today I am going to show you how to make this beautiful bracelet with all these gorgeous components in it. Um, beautiful mystic coloured uh, blue hematite. We've got some stunning iridescent shell tubes. Beautiful teal coloured cathedral beads, check glass. And a stunning um, silver... Uh, so, uh, excuse me, stunning, sterling silver, cubic zirconia magnetic clasp. Right, let's begin. Now, um, when you're making <coughs> a bracelet, obviously you have to take into account the fact that most people's wrists are, are different. So if you're making for somebody else, it's either a good idea to know their rough wrist side or... When you complete the bracelet, I tend, if I'm um, making it for somebody I don't know, because it's a strange question, isn't it? What size is your wrist? I tend to put an extra couple of jump rings on um, and that they can be removed as necessary or even added to. Right, now to begin, we will begin with the beautiful clasp now this is a magnetic clasp as i said now i'm going to have to hold on to this with my flat nose pliers because it's so strong i have to get the other flat nose pliers too sorry to whip that out of you right see very strong you see that how quickly it speeds up brilliant very safe clasp obviously quite easy to do um because bracelets can be difficult if you're on your own to to do up Right, now, I have used, um, obviously, I have used the beads in the in the kit, the cathedral beads, the gorgeous little um, hematite beads, the shell beads. I've also added some jump rings, some eye pins, um, which you can make just from 0.6, 0 0.8 wire, just a simple loop, um, some little... Crimp beads and crimp covers. Uh, I've also used a size 10 needle and some wildfire thread. Right now I'm going to begin at, um, at the clasp. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take an eye pin. Right, let's move the clasp out of the way. And then I'm going to pop on one of my beautiful, stunning cathedral beads. Let that drop down. Take my flat nose pliers and get some tautness there. All I want to see here is just that simple loop there. Just there, just that simple loop. I don't see any neck or anything or any, any gap. Hold it very, very tight. Just compromise the wire a little by just bending it slightly. Then push with your finger down. Then about a centimetre, cut off your residue. Take your round nose pliers about a centimetre or so down the uh, the plier itself. So you can't feel anything here sticking out. Push down till the arm's uncomfortable. Pop it back where it fits. And then just ease it down. Okay. So now we have got a simple loop each side of that bead. Right. So we've got that made. So I'll just put that to one side for now. The next component is, um, sorry, we're going this way around, aren't we? So the next component from that, there's the clasp, there's the cathedral bead. The next component is basically a, um, a jump, do you know, I've forgotten the name of it now. I've just done it on another video. Um, oh my goodness, I can't remember it. Anyway, you guys will remember that. I'm sure you will. Um, but whatever that is called, which will come to me when the video is finished, is um, is linked with two more separate jump rings. Um, if you're watching this after or before um, 
my previous video for today's kits, then you'll see me making whatever this is called. Oh my goodness, anyway, I'm going to show you this mystery object. And what we do is we take a jump ring closed and then we open four more jump rings. And taking the closed jump rings, just go inside and down, push that together. Inside the two, right inside, so you've got two of them trapped together. I believe I can't remember what that's called. It just goes to show you. Right, down again, linking the three. Bring them all together. And then the last one, go into the center. So we have got all of the previous four linked up. The idea being that you have to do each one in exactly the same way. That's how to make that mysterious um, chain mail. It'll come to me in a minute. Anyway, you have to have a laugh, don't you? Right, so we put that to one side now. And to attach it to this cathedral bead, we need to have two more jump rings. So I've got the two more jump rings here, which I'm going to open. When you open a jump ring, you open it north to south. In other words, from the top of the jump ring here, hopefully you'll be able to see the opening and you just pull towards you. And I'm going to take my mysterious object and pop it into the centre and drop it accordingly. Find the one that's open and close it. Let gravity um, help you out here um, by just dangling from that jump ring that you've just put in. Pop this back through the centre and then before you close up Take your cathedral bead that you have just made and pop that last jump ring in through that simple loop and close it nice and firmly. Right, so far we have our component made there. Now, the next thing I did was, again, using a head pin, um, sorry, a eye pin, an eye pin, I should say. Um, I'm going to pop on just three of these beautiful hematites. They're really sparkly. Honestly, they're absolutely beautiful. You wait until you get them under sort of a condescent, incandescent light, if that's the word. I'm losing my words today. Right. Let that just um, drop down to the loop. Again. Right on top of that bead, just compromise the wire a bit, push and trim off at the good old centimetre. Take your own nose pliers and curl back, put them back where they fit and then just pop that back. Um, I know we're going to open one of these loops next but it's always better, I've found in the past, to return that loop and complete it rather than leaving that loop slightly open in order to attach to whatever you're you're going to be attaching it to. Um, it just, since for that split second, the wire gets used to being in place and should return there when you attach it. So, okay, we've just closed it, but now we're going to open it. So flat nose pliers, open up and towards you. Take your last fitted jump ring and pop that into that loop and then return that loop just slightly past um, the complete circle just take it slightly past and then ease it back and push it into place we want these to be fairly firm um, because otherwise wire etc will always find a little way out right the next thing to do and I still haven't thought of the name of this. Hilarious, isn't it? What I've done, I've previously made another of Mobius ring. Yay! At last, at last. Um, I've made another Mobius ring. And I've attached it to the, the two jump rings. 
you can see here I've just attached it to a um, eye pin, right? Because basically what we're going to do is um, pop another one of these components on, which I'd pre-made. So also if you make these, uh, sorry, the, the idea for me making these, uh, putting this onto this eye pin, is simply because trying to find this connecting jump ring within the um, the busyness of the Mobius ring can be quite difficult and you might just catch one of the integral uh, jump rings that is inside the Mobius ring which you don't want to do. So what I'm going to do now because I need to attach it to this previous it's about basically you can see it's a mirror image here so we've got Mobius ring with the two jump rings on then we've got the little bit of a hem hematite and then we're going to have another Mobius ring. So I will open the eye pin and take it off. And then holding that jump ring, I will open up my simple loop, attach the jump ring and then let me just switch it around so I can get a nice firm closure. Close up, just go slightly past. Sorry, you couldn't see that, could you? Go slightly past, it's inside that jump ring, nice and firmly closed. So now we've got our cathedral bead followed by our two Mobius rings uh, and mirror image. And the next thing is to pop on another of your cathedral beads. So again, opening up your simple loop let gravity let me just open it a smidge bit more i don't like opening them too much so i don't mind having to uh, do them a little bit more because the problem is we don't want to compromise that wire too much pop that jump ring in and close up again you can take a little bit more time than i can um, just to really uh, confirm that those loops are well and truly closed. Right, now we're going to be on to the beading part from that cathedral bead there. So, needle and thread. Okay, size 10 needle and I have got uh, some wildfire here. And what I'm going to do now is pop on a little crimp bead. Okay, and just let that slide down to about a couple of inches from the end of my thread. Then making doubly sure that that loop there is completely and utterly safely closed. I'm going to pop my thread through that simple loop and then I am going to take the end and then I'm going to return the thread through, not around, but straight through. Hold on to the crimp and slide it down to that simple loop and then compress that. I'll give that a good squish. If you've got some, I can't find mine unfortunately within the... Um, chaos of my jewellery room at the moment but if you've got some crimping pliers then you can use your crimping pliers in order to squish it and to fold it uh, that's another day right so now i'm just going to take off with my zapper just take off within about half a centimeter then i'm just going to slightly singe that little bit of residue there because that melts then and hopefully it will be unlikely then to slip through the crimp you will hide that at a later point uh, with a crimp cover and then obviously if there's still a little bit of your thread out, uh, sticking out you can singe it a little bit more right now what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to pick up a pattern this will be a um repetitive pattern but you can do what you want i'm going to pick up 10 of my hematite let me just bring them a little bit more into shot oh for a cameraman Sounds weird. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
tin. And then I've got one of my little shells here, which are absolutely superb colour. And the iridescence, they're, well, basically it's a pearl, isn't it? Shell pearl. Pop on. Let those slide down. And then repeat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now let's just move those away a bit. And then another gorgeous pearl. Um, shell pearl. Right, now... On mine, you can see I have got three lots of tin and three of the shell tubes finishing with a shell tube. Okay, uh, I won't put the next ten on because um, I'm sure you all at the moment know exactly how to do that. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to show you how basically to fix the clasp right so when we come to the clasp we, as i said earlier it's always um better i think if you're not making for yourself or making with somebody else just put either a little link chain there or some extra jump rings in order that um, it can be extended right now again i'm going to pick up a crimp bead okay and i'm going to pick up a jump ring so we have a crimp bead and a jump ring. Keeping the crimp bead in my left hand, I'm just going to slide down slightly. So there's the jump ring. I'm going to return my needle through that crimp bead, hold on to the jump ring and gently pull that together. Right now, when you pull uh, either a clasp or a jump ring or anything, whenever you're using a crimp uh, bead, don't get it really taut because that is a point at which you get quite a lot of wear and tear. Just leave, leave a little bit of give there. Take your flat nose pliers or your crimp um, pliers and again, squish. Now what I'm going to do now is I am going to attach my jump ring to the clasp. Now... I decided to, I know this might sound a bit weird, but I, I've used the sort of the, the thickest jump ring that I'd, I thought would go through the hole on the clasps, simply because if it was a little bit floppy going through the hole here, um, it does actually cause more stress and tension on, on that end of the clasp because this is quite heavy. So that is the same jump ring, which has gone through perfectly, that I have used within the Mobius ring, etc. Do you see how that magnetic clasp? Um, and now I'm just going to, let me just lay that down a second and take off my thread. Taking care not to singe my sponge mat. Right, I'll trim that off later. Right, back to my beautiful clasp. I'm now going to pop that jump ring through that one. And there we go. And all we have to do now is to come around to the beginning part of the bracelet. We will open up this simple loop here. Take, let me pop those down because they get in the way. Take our clasp, pop our clasp. On. Now that the um, the clasp has two soldered jump rings, so they're perfectly safe. And then struggling with the magnetism of the clasp, not my magnetism. And again, completely closed. So there we have um, the finished bracelet. Okay, I admit that's a little bit small. That would work on one of my little granddaughters. But obviously we have an extra row of shell and hematite on the original here. So that's the gorgeous brace. Well, I think it is because I just absolutely adore these colours. So I hope you've enjoyed that. And um, no doubt, I'll see you again soon at, at Slippy Table Videos. Take care. Bye.